Hi there, I'm Jane Turner from writewithjane.com and I had the absolute privilege to work with Dr. Olivia Ong on her book, The Heart-Centeredness of Medicine. Now in a moment, you'll be hearing Olivia talking about why she wrote the book and I just want to give you a heads up that at about the six minute point, she does go into quite some detail about a very serious accident that she had. And as she's a doctor, she doesn't really pull any punches when she talks about the impact that that had on her body. So I just wanted to give you a little heads up about that. And without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Dr. Olivia Ong. Hi, everyone. I'm, I'm Olivia. I'm a pain physician here in Melbourne, but I'm also an author, speaker and coach. So I primarily help doctors who are burnt out, recover and manage their burnout so that they can thrive again. And even in, in this current climate where there's so much uncertainty right now, and I have to say the frontline healthcare workers are struggling and they're burnt out way before COVID and the pandemic has just made it 10 times worse. And one of the reasons why I wrote my book, The Heart Centeredness of Medicine, is because I've just seen way too many doctors feel so lost and you know just you know, overwhelmed burnt out, stressed, they've just lost their way. And I was once that doctor too. And I, I lost my way and and I found myself, you know, back to my own heart. So I wrote the book to help my fellow peers through burnout, give them some hope because burnout is such a soul wrenching um, condition that once you suffer burnout, it's essentially like, like the, a wounding to your soul that really it's hard to recover. And us doctors, we have a universal language when we see each other, when we've been through burnout, just making eye contact, silent communication speaks a lot. It's basically like going to war together and having a common language in a way. But I'll have to say that burnout is probably not unique to the healthcare industry. It's probably across everyone around the world, really. Given the last 18 months we've been through hell and back, literally, with COVID, some of us have lost our jobs lost loved ones to COVID. And some of us couldn't even say goodbye to our loved ones because of COVID. Like we're not allowed to visit them. But in, in the context of all that, my book will be quite relevant, not to just people in healthcare, probably people who are going through burnout. So in, in my book, I cover lots of heart-based tools like self-compassion, mindfulness, gratitude. But primarily I focused on a lot on self-compassion because this is what truly is lacking i guess or healthcare professionals find it really difficult to conceptualize and embody it and what do i mean by that intellectually it's not very difficult to comprehend self-compassion three pillars first pillar is mindfully aware of your own suffering secondly connection with yourself and others and thirdly will be accept being kind to yourself self-kindness but the problem is this, you know, as healthcare professionals, we're so used to putting other people's needs above ours, especially patients, like patients for obvious reasons. Then after that, we have our family members and our loved ones above our needs, and we always come last. And the thing is with self-compassion, yes, easy to understand the three concepts, but if you ask a healthcare professional to actually be aware of their own suffering, that's actually a hard thing in itself because a lot of them are going on autopilot. We can safely say for our New South Wales colleagues and so probably Victoria very shortly that they're probably going to go on, they've been on autopilot for many months now and just, you know, every day living a life like that, every day you wear, you know, the protective personal equipment, um, one wrong step and there's that chance you might get COVID and not only that, you know, they've been isolated from their loved ones. So, um, a lot of them are not able to probably live with their loved ones just because they work in a hospital with COVID cases and they choose to stay away from their loved ones and stay in accommodation near the hospital. And when you ask these um, healthcare professionals, I guess to be mindful of their suffering, it's really hard because they're actually having to put their own well-being first by even being aware of their own suffering because that's a starting point, right? And that's hard. Um, it is a paradigm shift and an uh, embodiment practice shift, essentially. But once they've come to be aware of their own suffering, which is the awareness piece, 
they, they start to connect to themselves and others, which is hard in itself. When you've been burnt out for so long, you, you're just feeling very isolated. And that is like a muscle, it takes a bit of practice. And then lastly, self-kindness, which is I think the hardest of all the three, because essentially they're opening literally, opening their heart, letting love in. And then they will come across a very uncomfortable feeling, what we call the backdraft. The firefighters probably will know what it is. Um, so firefighters, when they go in to put out fires, um, when they open a door that's been closed for a while, there'll be this surge of oxygen and things, and it's really uncomfortable heat sensation. And that's essentially how they feel when they start to be kind to themselves. But over time, these three components, Jane and everyone else here, it's, it's like a muscle. You have to just practice it every day. It may be really uncomfortable, to begin with, but yeah, like going to the gym initially when you work out, it's like, oh boy, my biceps hurt, <laughs> my triceps hurt. After a while, it's okay, you get stronger. It's the same with self-compassion. And I, I will encourage all of you to practice self-compassion too, when you can, um, it, it, will, it will be very, very beneficial, especially when times are challenging. And as we stay in the current pandemic, yes, it will be still very challenging. And we still have to deal with post COVID issues you know like fatigue and stress related issues but um you had a very brutal awakening mm. you know you didn't just stumble on self-compassion no. so tell tell everyone a little bit more about that part of your story sure uh, so my journey to self-compassion has been a bit like um life really took a really unexpected turn when i was a junior doctor i was basically living a life um of any, like any doctor really, being an autopilot all the time. That's our lives really. And then I, one day I was walking to work and then I was hit by a car at high speed. It was actually witnessed by quite a number of my colleagues, which was quite traumatizing. They actually had to go through counseling because they witnessed a car hitting me. But to me at that point in time, it happened really quickly. And before, I, the next moment I knew I was on the ground and my I was lying in a really awkward position. And obviously I went to doctor mode. I started going, you know, um, okay, obviously I could still understand, like I could still, still see the sky. I could understand what was going on. I didn't have a head injury because someone with a head injury wouldn't know what was going on. Um, and I was starting to analyze what was happening. I was partly in shock, but start also partly in, in doctor mode. So I started, um, thinking about did I break my pelvic bones or did I have a spinal cord injury? So I was hoping for the, the pelvic fractures because bones heal. So I was like, you know, still optimistic despite lying in the awkward position on the ground. But when I went to the, um, to the hospital, which is one of the major trauma centers in Melbourne, they did a CT scan straight away and told me the diagnosis that my back was smashed in half, literally. Yeah, no, sounds awful. Yeah, basically, yeah, and um, it actually, um, the bone fragments went into the spinal canal where my spinal cord um, sat. And that's why I was paralyzed from the waist down and I couldn't feel. Um, I think when, when the news landed on me, I, I, I think I was more in shock rather than being able to comprehend the gravity of the whole situation. And then I had emergency spinal surgery and then I spent a couple of weeks just trying to fight basically survive and fight back, essentially. But once I was medically okay, I was transferred to a rehab hospital and that's when reality sunk in. Because I saw many other people like myself, smart people um, having had devastated spinal cord injuries and we were all in the same ward. And, you know, like we, we all meet and we talk, we debrief and we talked about what happened to all of us. And that was when it really hit me. That was when grief actually finally hit me at full scale. That I, there was a chance that I might not walk again. I might not, I probably won't have a normal life anymore. And I think the main thing I, I worried about was to, was whether I could work again as a doctor. That was my main focus. Cause I spent like 10 years working up to that point, med school, um, doing my internship and my um, resident years. And I was just telling God, you know, like, um, why me? Like, I think I was really angry. Like, I was only 28 when it happened. Like, people at my at the age will be having the prime time of their lives. And I had to actually just watch everyone around me, just enjoy life as it was normal. 
well, here I am just like stuck in this bad, like nightmare movie that never went away. <laughs> it just perpetually every day was the same thing. Yeah, it, it was hard, very, very hard for, not only for myself, for my husband too, who I think when a devastating injury happens to some like, yeah, to someone, it affects the people around them. So I truly felt what it was like to be a patient. Now, if you'd like to find out more about what Olivia does or purchase her wonderful book, The Heart-Centred Doctor, you can do that at dralivialeeong.com. Now, if you'd like to write a book of your own, just reach out to me at jane at writewithjane.com and we can have a chat about how you can get started. Perhaps you've already written the book and you're unsure about how to get it published or how to promote it. Just reach out to me at jane at writewithjane.com and I'd be more than happy to answer all of your questions.